Uh, this was a, a heavyweight fight. Hit sacks! We knew this was going to be a battle. Blow for blow. We score, they score. Westbrook, Akita, touchdown! Tight crowd at the 40, breaks the tackle 30. There is Arthur Juan. Touchdown, tight. Fires downfield, the ball is intercepted. Fired. That's, that's the thing about this team, we're just resilient. We're going to keep swinging, we're going to keep swinging, and we're going to make a play, big play at the end of the game. Randy kicked a great kick, so I'm just happy that we won the game. Snap, set, kick. Ain't no talking to the line, you got to play. Yes! That was so good! Coach, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the Mike Vrabel Show. News hit yesterday that Derrick Henry needed foot surgery. That surgery today, and now the focus on Derrick Henry, healing. Yep, that's all we're hoping for is that uh, he takes it, and, and I know he'll work as hard as he possibly can, and, and we, we care a lot about Derrick, and you know he means a lot to us on and off the football field. A lot of people focusing on who takes his place. Adrian Peterson added to the practice squad. You played against him, didn't you? I might have. <laughs> I might have. Probably not very well. But, you know, that's, uh, it, you know, it was a somebody that we worked out and we felt like, um, you know, it's going to give us some options here at the end of the week and, you know, extremely talented, uh, physical runner. So, you know, we'll kind of see where he is at the end of the week. Got to play it on out and the Titans will play the Rams on Sunday. But let's first take a look back at this past Sunday's big win over the Indianapolis Colts, starting with defense. Titans down 14 to nothing. Colts had converted two fourth downs. They go for it again. They don't make it, and it's a turning point. No, and it was. It was a huge play for us. The, we knew they were going to go for it a lot on, you know, fourth down, and so we were able to kind of get them in, in, into a zone look there. We lined up in man and played a little bit of zone, and, you know, he aired milled one, but I felt like we were in good position to, to force that incompletion right there. So the Titans are able to get it to 14 to 7. And then Wentz dropping the throw, and he finds Harold Landry coming after him a little bit later. Landry now with eight and a half sacks on the season. He is racking them up, and then you're going to see here this game. He takes it up the field. Danico does a nice job there grabbing two guys, and Harold's able to snap it off and get a sack. And, you know, we have to continue to get some production, and we have. But, you know, you can see Harold kind of selling it there with speed and then being able to come around. Uh, into the pocket as the quarterback there is trying to duck into another penalty. <laughs> so Wentz goes down. Wentz in trouble late in the ball game as well in the end zone. Titans with a good rush and the beneficiary, the rookie, Elijah Moe. Yep, yeah, we got to affect the quarterback. And this is certainly a play here. You know, Harold's all over. He sniffs it out. And, uh, you know, Elijah looked like a, you know, jumping Jack Flash coming out of there, jumped up and kind of took the ball. And you see Harold, you know, Obviously, Bud, the effort to get up there and to get on there and affect the quarterback and to force him into a bad decision. And um, you know, we're there to, to, to capitalize. That's a heady play by the young man. Go to overtime. Game's tied at 31. Feels like the Colts have the momentum. Let's look at a couple of plays from OT. Second down and six at their own 34. Initial possession. Look at this Monty Rice play. Well, yep, we're getting some pressure there. Would have loved to be able to get the quarterback back there. And, you know, Monty's coming over there. And, you know, he's tight on his guy and, and doesn't give up any run after catch and obviously forces the, incom the incompletion. But, you know, good pressure there by David and Jeff. We just, you know, we're going to have to keep the quarterback in the pocket and try to get him on the ground. All right, so that makes it third down and six. You see a rookie make a play there. Here's a second-year player who makes a play on the third down effort. We're talking about Chris Jackson. Yep, and he's battling. We knew they were going to take shots, and, you know, Chris is all over it. You know, they're, they're – clamoring for another pass interference penalty. Thought it was well-timed. You know, they try to throw one over our heads. And, you know, Chris comes back and bang, bang play, and you know, he's playing the football. I thought it was a really good play. The Titans go three and out, and the ball goes back to the Colts. 
and then it's the defense that makes the play, setting up the game-winning field goal. We're talking about Kevin Byer. Yep, they're in a snug formation there, and you know Kevin had a great understanding of what was going to go on. You can see David, and you know threw it into another you know, their Titans team meeting, and you know Kevin was able to come over there and make a play on it. But I felt like there were some other guys doing a really nice job of of covering and. Uh, being there for, for to help make the play. As we've shown these defensive plays, look at all the different names we've mentioned. We run through as many as we have. That's they good. All play. That's good. Okay, a look at the defense here. A look at the offense next with the Mike Brable Show continues. Started with a defensive six pack. How about an offensive six pack for the Titans? Down 14 to nothing. Titans get the ball back at their own 40 yard line. 60 yard drive ends with a touchdown pass to a tight end. Yep, got some good play action sell, and you know, Ryan's able to stay in the pocket. You know, a lot of guys, we've got some moving parts there going with Derek and the puller, and you know, he's able to kind of find Jeff in there right behind the backer. And, you know, it's good for those tight ends to do all that dirty work to go down there and get a couple touchdowns. And, you know, Prue had been getting them, so now it was nice to see Swaim get one. Tight ends had seven catches in the ball game. Swaim with four of them, Pruitt with two, and Ferkser with a grab. That makes it 14-7. to seven. So then after a very strange play, an interception, fumble recovered by the Titans, gives him a first down on the 43. How about a little A.J. Brown? Yep, yeah, just take advantage of the play-action pass and, you know, he's just so strong. He's just got such great play strength. And, you know, you can see we've, we're we starting to get used to these 10 and 12 yard passes that get broken there. And, you know, they, you know, one on one tackle with a corner. And, you know, he's, AJ is able to shrug him off over here and stay in bounds and take care of the football. You can see him hammering at the football right there. And, you know, sometimes when you hammer at the football, sometimes you miss tackles and they go for touchdowns. That's a 218 pound corner. That's a 230-something pound receiver. Yes, I know. Okay, so 17-14. We're playing the football game in the third quarter. Titans trail, but they're going on a drive, and it's a third down early. So how about a little more, A.J. Brown? Why not? Just great protection. Felt like you see the pocket and, and just a rifling it through there and a needle. But it all starts with a protection. It all starts with up front, being able to give Ryan a clean pocket, where he's able to step up, slide over, you know, and be decisive right there, and A.J. catch it in traffic. It's a little behind him, and he makes quarterback right right there. All right, so a little further into that drive, it's fourth and two. You decide to go. Yep, we, uh, we're just trying to be calculated. We're trying to use the field position and, you know, what we feel like this, the, the game dictates and, you know, felt real confident about this play, and, uh, you know, guys made us right. You know, Ryan made a great decision there with the, you know, taking it and pulling it and, Getting around the edge. Two 13-yard runs in the ball game for Tannehill, who has 165 yards rushing on the season. Drive continues. It's now over seven minutes long. It's third down and four at the Indianapolis five-yard line in WI. That's Nick Westbrook Aquino. And uh, you can just see, man, this is this is growth right here. This is a receiver going in there using his size, the quarterback trusting him and catching the ball out in front of his body. You know, these are contested catches and we've been through this and that's a perfect example of a wide receiver going and catching the ball out in front of his body, not letting it get into his pads, more, just the same good protection. But you can see that DB can't even get to that football. Yeah, it's not bad coverage, but he makes the no, play. No, that's, that's it. You let that ball get into your shoulder pads, they're able to bat it down or bad things happen. So. You know, you go and see Nick, and that's a great picture of that, and, and that's why he's in there, because we trust him to do those types of things. Okay, so we showed you the Bayard interception. This is not really offense, but this completes the six-pack. Let's watch Randy Bullock do his thing from 44 yards to win. Give Randy some love. You know, Randy has done a great job since he's been here, um, you know, just coming in and, and, and providing some stability for us, and, and this is huge, and, and just really, a lot, of, a lot of credit goes to him to come in here and, and make these kind of kicks for us. And some stability with Morgan Cox snapping it and Brett Kern as the holder back in there. And that, that consistent rhythm for a kicker is so big. Well, the operation, and I think people always undermine the operation, but the operation is critical. It's laces, it's the tilt, and, and Randy being able to put it through. Randy Bullock, 15 of 17 on the year 
for the Tennessee Titans kicking field goals. Titans win to go to six and two. That was an important game, but this is the most important game on the Mike Brable show. It's Delta Dentals. Can you guess this Titan? Probably not, but we'll find All right, out. Here we go. Can you guess this Titan? It's a unique look with the mustache. An amazing mustache. It is. All right, we need to go to break. You've had enough of a look. When we come back, Mike Vrabel will let us know if he can guess this Titan presented by Delta Dental on his show, The Mike Vrabel Show. It's his favorite part of the show every week. No, it's not. Delta Dentals, can you guess this Titan? Mike Vrabel acts like he doesn't like it, I, but he loves no. it. He says we should do it in every segment Stop of the talking. show. I love Delta Dental, but I hate this game. It's so hard. I'm not that good at it, but I'm good tonight because that's Jeremy McNichols. Jeremy McNichols. Yes. See? Three catches for 33 yards in the game. I, I know, and a huge catch. Huge great catch, catch, too. And a great play by Ryan. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ryan's going to his left, puts that ball, layers it out there. Jeremy catches it. He's able to corral it, secure the catch. You know, and get us almost a first down and, and, and gives us an opportunity to go for it on fourth down. I thought his stretch might have gotten the yeah, first down. Yeah, well, that's pretty good effort there. You know, hard telling. Hard telling with that crew, but we'll see. All right. All right. So, Jeremy McNichols was this week's Can You Guess This Titan as far as Delta Dental. This week in the Titans Files, we go on the other side of the ball for someone known for his size, his strength, his effort, and his leadership. And who better to talk about him than one of the great leaders of the team? Amy Wells convinced an offensive lineman to talk nice about a defensive lineman in this week's Titans Files. Dropping to throw Allen. Has time. Sack! Big Jeff! If you want to discuss a talented defensive lineman, the best person to ask for expertise would only figure to be an offensive lineman. The problem with that is most offensive linemen loathe to discuss their counterparts on the other side of the line of scrimmage. It's almost a rule. Offensive linemen never, ever talk about defensive linemen, not publicly at least. So when we asked Titan center Ben Jones to discuss his teammate Jeffrey Simmons, we expected Jones might tell us to get lost. Instead, the team leader was pleased to praise his young teammate, even if he plays on the other side of the line. We love Jeffrey. Um, he's on our team, and I'm glad he's on our team because it could be some long Sundays if you had to go against him. He brings uh, intensity. He brings uh, a style of ball that, um, as an offensive player, you want him on your team. He's a guy that brings energy, and he's, he's coming every play and that's a uh, guy you can build around. He's a leader over there. As a, as a young kid, I think he's 24, 25 in, in Lily. He has more ranks over there than anybody. Those guys trust him, and the way you earn that is how you work, and he works. He makes guys better on the team. Um, he's not gonna let you slack. He's not gonna let a guy take plays off, and that's what a leader does. As a defensive player, no matter if somebody beats you, he's not gonna give up on a play. He chases the ball down, he strips it, he picks up fumbles and the amount of effort he plays with. Um, the play's never over on defense, and that's our style of ball over there. Um, you finish longer than the guy with the ball, and he's over there attacking the ball, and he's a guy that you want on your team. That's high praise from Ben Jones, who's a leader on this Titans roster. Ben knows that when it comes to linemen, looks can be deceiving. Some of the best football players are often guys with the worst physiques, and vice versa. Sometimes guys who are built like action movie superstars can't play a lick. But when it comes to Jeffrey Simmons, well, they don't call him Big Jeff for nothing. And he may be in a movie with The Rock someday, but that's not going to be until he has a long NFL career. Yeah, um, you see him when he walks in, um, he works hard. He, um, he's God-given ability. Um, he's built, he's strong, he's powerful, and it's his mindset. Um, you got to have a certain mindset to play that on that ball and play snap in over and over again, and he's got it. He looks the part, he plays the part, and he can talk the talk. So he's, he's a total package over there. 
Jeffrey Simmons is a type of guy you want to mold your defense around. He's big, strong, powerful, and he plays with a relentless effort. He's a guy you want, to, want on your team. Thanks, Amy. Always glad to have a chance to talk about Jeffrey Simmons. A lot of times big guys don't have a motor because they've always been big and they haven't needed it. Jeffrey Simmons, on the other hand, has a motor that goes he all the time. He conditions himself. He plays extremely hard. He's been a force for us inside since he's gotten here, and he's only continued to improve. And, you know, what a great piece, a lot of respect from, a, from another, you know, warrior coming out of these games. And he takes a lot of snaps for us, and, you know, he's far from 100%. And I just appreciate his effort. I appreciate his leadership, everything you said there at the beginning of that piece. You challenge him, though. You challenge him to be better. Where can he continue to grow? Well, I mean, I just think he can continue to understand formations and recognition and, and playing blocking schemes and, and playing with his hands out in front of him, and, and he'll continue to do that. When we come back, Mike Vrabel's Nissan keys to winning in Los Angeles. That's next on The Mike Vrabel Show. Titans first trip as the Titans to Los Angeles. The Rams the opponent. 7:20 kickoff at SoFi Stadium on Sunday night. Time for the Nissan keys to victory. Let's start with taking care of Ryan Tannehill, protection of the utmost importance. It's going to be huge. And we saw some clips earlier in the show about when we have a good pocket and he can step up and throw. Aaron Donald leads the charge. I mean, we're going to have to have a lot of hands on this guy and take care of him. Sebastian's in there pounding around, Robinson. So it's going to start inside out for us up front. And Von Miller plays for their team now. Oh, I guess he does, but we'll have to take <laughs> care of the middle pocket and hope we can run him by. All right, the second key, field position and special teams. This is an area where you're playing real well right well, now. Well, we're, we're doing better. You know what I mean? We got to take care of these kickoff returns and we got to be able to go down there and, 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 and be consistently violent on our kickoff coverage. But you know, we have had some kickoff returns that are close and we're gaining some yards. We took the ball from the seven yard line out to the 26 yard line the other day. That's, that's a huge deal right there. Yeah, nice job by Chester Rogers, not fair catching that one. He yeah. fooled me. He fooled a lot of people. Yeah, nice job by him. All right, so for Nissan key number three, I'm gonna do my coach Dave McGinnis. You gotta limit those explosives, coach. No question. And it comes <laughs> down to everybody that you're doing their job. You know, Cooper Cup leads the league in 20 yard receptions. Uh, this is this is a team that's you know explosive on offense. They're they're operating at at full capacity and, and it, they're very efficient. So that'll be critical. We do a great job in X plays. We got a chance to win. We'll see you out in California. See you, bud. All right. We come back. We wrap it up and remind you that the Titans have seen Matthew Stafford in the last 12 months. Maybe you don't remember. We've got a refresher course on the Mike Rabel show. Matthew Stafford of the Los Angeles Rams is the number two rated passer in the entire National Football League right now. He's in year 13, in year one with the Rams after 12 seasons in Detroit. The Titans actually saw him at Nissan Stadium less than a year ago, and they were impressed. The story of that week was that Matthew Stafford likely would not play at Tennessee on December 20th. Stafford suffered a rib cartilage injury on a six-yard run against Green Bay in the previous game. And why would Stafford play? In his 12th NFL season, with his head coach already having been fired, careening towards another losing season in Detroit, with rumors everywhere that he would be traded in the offseason. Why play? But Stafford chose to play in Nashville and played well. Down seven to nothing early, he took the Lions down the field for a first quarter touchdown to tie the game. He hit Marvin Jones with a 39-yard pass that pulled Detroit within six late in the first half. Midway through the third quarter, Stafford's arm was still on display as he completed this 36-yard pass to keep the Lions within one score. The Titans would pull away in the final 20 minutes of the game. It was the familiar faces doing the damage. Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, more Derrick Henry. And eventually, Stafford left the game, but not before he completed 22 of 32 passes for 252 yards and a touchdown. 
He impressed everyone, not just with his obvious talent, but with his desire to play on a day when few thought he would or should. That's why when Matthew Stafford was traded to the Los Angeles Rams on St. Patrick's Day, people who know football knew it would be a perfect fit. A very talented, experienced quarterback in a super offensive system with an exciting new lease on his football life that he clearly loves. I think he's having fun right now. They're seven and one. He hasn't been sacked much. And they're playing the Titans on Sunday night football this week. We've got it for you on 104.5 The Zone, beginning at six with Titans Countdown. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.